It's clear to me from the four-page summary by uh, Attorney General Barr that the Russians did, in fact, hack into the DNC, uh, the Podesta emails. It was the Russians. It wasn't some 300-pound guy sitting on a bed somewhere. And the conclusion was firm, without equivocation, that no one on the Trump campaign uh, colluded with the Russians when it came to the 2016 election. As to the obstruction of justice matter, apparently the special uh, counsel gave some of this and some of that, and Mr. Barr and Rosenstein concluded that the evidence was insufficient to move forward on obstruction of justice by the president or anyone around his team. So um, I hope soon to have as much of the report released as possible and what happens next. What happens next is that I have been talking since 2017, the end of 2017, about the other side of the story. And nobody much appeared, appears to care, but I hope you will find some interest now, that the FISA warrant issued against Carter Page based on a dossier prepared by Christopher Steele is at a minimum disturbing. Whether or not it's illegal, I don't yet know. So I'm going to get answers to this. If no one else cares, it seems to be Republicans do. And that's sad. Because if the shoe were on the other foot, it would be front page news all over the world. The double standard here has been striking and quite frankly disappointing. I am 100% convinced that if the Republican Party had hired Mr. Steele to go to Russia and investigate Clinton, and the report was prepared uh, and given to the Department of Justice, used to get a warrant against a Clinton associate, and the underlying information in the dossier proved to be garbage, everybody in the world would have it on the front page it would be endless chatter on the cable networks. I'm also convinced if the agents involved in investigating Clinton, if the shoe were on the other foot, hated her and wanted Trump to win, we'd be having a thorough discussion. I'm also convinced if they interviewed Trump with a couple of his associates there, not under oath, and already made up a decision not to charge him, that they would be outraged in this country. So the rule of law applies both to Republicans and Democrats. And why do we have a special counsel? In rare circumstances, to have somebody outside the Department of Justice to take a look at a hot topic. I know the president did not believe that a special counsel should have been, should have been appointed. I do. It was clear to me that Jeff Sessions was part of the Trump campaign. And when it came time to look at whether or not the Trump campaign did anything wrong with the Russians, it's impossible for Jeff Sessions to render a verdict because he was part of the campaign. That made imminent sense to me then and now. What makes no sense to me is that all the abuse by the Department of Justice and the FBI, the unprofessional conduct, the shady behavior, nobody seems to think that's much important. Well, that's going to change, I hope. I've been calling since the end of 2017 for a special counsel to be appointed to look at whether or not the FISA warrant process was abused for political purposes whether or not a counterintelligence investigation was opened up regarding the Trump campaign as a backdoor to spy on the campaign. I still to this day am at a loss to explain why nobody went to President Trump to tell him there may be some people in your orbit that are connected to the Russians and working with the Russians. A counterintelligence investigation is designed to protect the entity being uh, uh, targeted by a foreign power. In Diane Feinstein's case, she had somebody working with her that the FBI suspected of having an inappropriate relationship with the government of China. 
They told Diane about it and she let the guy go. That's the way it's supposed to work. How did it fail and break down here? Was it a ruse to get into the Trump campaign? I don't know, but I'm going to try to find out. As to the Clinton email disposition, why did Comey do what he did? Why did he take over the investigation in July, make a statement that uh, she did a lot of bad things but not quite a crime? That did affect this election. And if the shoe were on the other foot, Republicans would have been pretty mad about that. What was the conflict that made Loretta Lynch so unable to preside over the Clinton email investigation? Was it just a tarmac meeting or was it more? I believe there was more there and I intend to get to there. How could in October, right before the election, we find out that emails on the Clinton server wind up in the hands of Anthony Weiner and just within 48 hours, everybody's good to go. This is bizarre at best, troubling to its core from my point of view. So Mr. Mueller has been given a chance to do his job. Two years, 19 lawyers, 40 FBI agents, 2,800 subpoenas, 500 people interviewed, 230 orders for communication records, 13 requests to foreign governments for evidence, $25 million or more. That is what happened to the Trump campaign. And I've been okay with that scrutiny from day one. When it comes to the FISA warrant, the Clinton campaign, the counterintelligence investigation, it's pretty much been swept on the rug except by a few Republicans in the House. Those days are over. Going forward, hopefully in a bipartisan fashion, we will begin to unpack the other side of the story. With that, I'll take questions. Sorry.